Hey guys, so last time we talked about the binomial formula, but not really actually the formula itself, just its components, right? So how to do combinations, and also how to apply the multiplication rule for events. So now let's go ahead and jump into the actual binomial formula, which is given by this crazy equation, right? <laughs> so p of x equals x. So that's the number of successes equals the number of successes that we want. Um, and so we have the combination function, you see the first one there, and also the probability of success to the, mul to the power of the number of successes times the probability of failure to the power of the number of trials minus successes, which at the end of the day, technically that's kind of like our failures anyways, right? So this here is basically just failures. And so the binomial formula is able to spit out all possible combination of events. So remember how we were talking about there's different ways events can happen together and all this cool stuff. So they tell you all the possible ways and also the probabilities associated with it. It takes it all into account and spits out a probability. So it's best to start by writing down all the given variables from the word problem before we move on to that. So again, just a recap, x is the number of successes, n is the number of trials, p is probability of success, and a q is probability of failure. So real quick, what's the probability of getting five true false questions all correct by simply guessing? So in this case, our number of successes is what? We have five correct, right? What's our number of trials? We have five trials, right? Because we're answering five questions. So we're answering five questions. We want to answer them all correct. So five for five. And then P is the probability of success. So what's the probability of us getting it right if we're simply guessing? 50% chance, good. And Q is just 1 minus that, or essentially what's the probability of us get, getting it wrong, right? So that's also 50%. Cool, so let's just plug it into our formula. So the probability that X equals 5 equals, so our N is 5, C, X is 5. Probability of success is 0.50 to the what power? To the, we want 5 successes, right? And then 0.50. And then how many failures do we have? How many le what is left over? If we have five trials and we want five successes, there's nothing left, right? So it's zero. And just to recap with math, this actually ends up being just one. And then the combination. I'm only going to do it for this first one just because it takes time to do the combination function, but I would suggest that you use your calculator. And so your calculator is able to spit out the combination function for you, and it tells you basically the number of ways certain events can happen. But let's just go ahead and do it real quick, just one example. So we have 5 factorial over 5 factorial times 5 minus 5 factorial, right? So this ends up being 0. Actually, let me do it this way. This ends up being 1. And then factorial of 1 is actually 0. So there we go. Then we move on to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 1, right? Oh, sorry about that. This is actually 0, duh. This is going to be 0, and then this is going to give us 1. Cool. So then once we do this, we go ahead and cross off everything at the top with anything that we have the same on the bottom. And so we're left with nothing on top aka one and then one on bottom so the total number of ways that you can get five questions right out of five is just to get it right the first time get it right the second time third fourth and fifth right there's no other kind of ways or order that we can do this so that's why it's only one cool so it's basically 0.5 to the fifth which gives us 0.0313 cool so let's move on to our second example. You flip a quarter five times. What's the probability you flip exactly two heads? So again, what's our number of successes? You want to flip two heads, right? How many times are we flipping it? Five. What's our probability of getting heads? It's 0.5. And probability of getting tails? 0.5. Cool. So then probability that x equals 2 equals and so we're flipping it five times combination we want two successes or two heads times the probability of getting a head is 50 or 0.5 I'm just gonna say 0.5 to the what power to the power of the number of successes right so our number of successes in this case is two 
that means we have how many failures? If we flipped heads twice, we have five coins total. There's three coins left that are going to be tails, right? So, once we do five combination two, we get ten. We should be getting ten. So again, if you have questions, feel free to post on the side. Um, questions regarding how to do the combination function on your calculator. Um, most of them are pretty similar. So this ends up being 0.5 to the fifth, right? Because 0.5 squared or point times 0.5 to the third, you just add up those exponents on the top. And if that kind of blew your head, feel free. Just use a calculator. We're not going to go over algebra in this class. So 0.5 to the fifth times 10. Oops, sorry about that. So 10 times 0.5 to the fifth gives us 0.3125. Cool? So there's a 31% chance that you're going to flip a quarter five times and get exactly two heads. So now, let's move on to the last one. The probability of having a girl is 65% on average. Again, these are made up numbers. We don't really know. What's the probability that out of seven kids, a randomly selected couple will pop out at least two girls? So here we have our, let's do n first. Let's save for x later. So well, how many total trials do we have? It's basically how many kids we're trying to pop out, right? So we have seven. What's the probability of success? Success in this case, we want girls, right? So these are our successes. How many successes do we want? I mean, I'm sorry, what's the probability of success? It's 0.65, right? Because it's 65% chance that we'll have a girl. We'll have a girl. <laughs> it's weird. And then the leftovers, probability of having a boy, right? So if it's 65% chance of having a girl, there's a 35% chance of having a boy. And again, that's just the idea that the probability of success and failure, there's only two outcomes, so those should both add up to one. And now, number of successes. So we want at least two girls. So that means we want two, three, four, or more girls, right? So the probability, I mean, the number of successes we want is greater than or equal to two. Does that make sense? So the probability that x is greater than or equal to two is basically the probability that x is two, right? Plus the probability that x is three, right? Plus, and you keep going all the way up to the probability that x is seven, right? So seven total girls um, out of seven. And then you start off with two, because we want at least two, so two or more. So now, we're actually going to have to calculate one of these guys for every one of those probability functions, right? That's going to take a lot of work, a lot of time. So let's try to think of a way that we can make this a little easier. So the way we do that is using complements, right? So if our sample space is zero girls, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Does that make sense? So we want how many girls? We want at least two. So that would take into account two or more, right? But that means we would have to calculate for two, three, four, five, and six, and seven successes. That's a lot of work. So let's go ahead and use a complement. So essentially, we want to look at zero and one, right? And see what's the probability of zero and one. So this is zero and one versus at least two, right? And so these are complements because the event of having at least two girls is not covered by having 0 or 1, right? So 0 and 1, having 0 and 1 girls is going to be the complement to at least 2. So basically, the probability of at least 2 is 1 minus the probability of 0 or 1 girl. Does that make sense? Because since our outcomes, there's only two outcomes, and these are our sample space, everything basically adds up to 1, right? So 1 minus the probability of 0, 1. So let's go ahead and write that. 1 minus the probability of 0. I'm sorry, x equals 0. Minus the probability that x equals 1. Cool? Because that's the probability of 0 or 1. It's both of them together. So let's start off with the probability that x is 0. I'm going to write it here on the side and then plug it back into our formula over there. So probably x is 0 is we have 7 girls, combination, 0 successes. What's the probability of success? 0.65. How many successes do we want? We're saying 0 girls to start with. 
and then 35%, and how many boys do we want? 7. So probability that x equals 1 is 7c1.65. We want one, bo one girl, and now we're left with 6 boys, right? So once we do those functions, and we've kind of practiced them up kind of further up, so that's why I'm moving a little faster, we end up getting 0 0.006. 0006 and also 0 0.0084 so we say 1 minus 0 0.006 I'm sorry 0 0006 Jesus I keep saying that <laughs> minus the prob minus the probability of having one girl which is 0 0.0084 and so we end up with 0 0.9910 so given that the probability of having a girl is 65%, the probability of having at least two girls out of seven kids is going to end up being 99%. And the reason for that is because the probability of having a girl is higher than the probability of having a boy, right? So us having a higher number of girls is pretty likely because the ha chance of having a girl is higher than having a boy. Cool. So that's about it for binomial formula. Let's go ahead and do some practice problems, dive right on in. Um, and then we'll talk about the binomial table, which will be a little shortcut. So you're going to kill me when you learn about that one.